and welcome to our celebration of the centenary of the Knights of the Southern Cross Victoria, which we are undertaking on the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. And a special welcome to our Archbishop and Principal Celebrant, Peter Commonsoli, and the Concelebrated Clergy, Bishops Hilton Deacon, Peter Connors, Peter Connors, uh, Leslie Tomlinson, Monsignor Franco Cavara, who's the parish priest of this magnificent church, and the Reverend Tony Kerr. If you think I'm prejudiced, it's because I'm a Christian here. Uh, Bishop Les Tomlinson is the current National Chaplain of the Order, and Father Tony Kerr is the Victorian State Chaplain. An acknowledgement to country. I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation on whose land we are celebrating Mass and socialising this afternoon. These First Nations people have dwelt here and called it home for many centuries. I acknowledge their special relationship to this land and pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. As Christians, may we all continue to work for reconciliation and inclusion of all peoples in the communion of the church, where all are valued and treasured as the children of God and all are people in Christ. Now, before we begin Mass, we are still under the cloud of COVID and all the associated regulations. And as you came to church, you were asked to check in using the St. Clement of Rome QR code. That check in covers you for Mass and afternoon tea in the Clifton Centre. And masks are compulsory in church unless you have an exemption. A reminder to please continue to maintain safe hygiene and sanitising procedures. And there's sanitising stations uh, around the church. When coming to communion, and communion will be distributed by Archbishop Peter and uh, I think Bishop Les Tomlinson down the centre aisle and Monsignor Franco and Father Tony Kieran down the yes. two of the files.
Mary, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Welcome, friends, for this celebration mass of the 100th anniversary of the forming of the Victorian State uh, Knights of the Southern Cross. Uh, coming out of, as you know, the Knights of uh, Francis Aiken, getting its life from the tempest uh, from this 100th uh, anniversary. Welcome especially to all the knights who are present here with your families, the, the wives, spouses and friends who have gathered for this celebration of Mass. Also welcome the troika of bishops and others uh, here for this celebration, our former uh, uh, state chaplains, current national chaplains, and current state chaplain. Uh, it's all wonderful that we can here in this beautiful church in St. Clement of Rome. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and say, prepare ourselves for the sake of this peace. Have mercy on us, Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant that your faithful, the Knights of the Southern Cross, 
whom you have called to live amid the world and its affairs, may be fervent with the Christian spirit, and through the tasks they carry out in this present age, may constantly build up your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. second reading is a reading from the Corinthians. Just as we have carried the earthly image, we must carry the heavenly image. The first man, Adam, as the scripture says, became a living soul. But the last Adam has become a life-giving spirit. That is, first the one with the soul, not the spirit, and after that, the one, the spirit. The first man, being from the earth, is earthly by nature. The second man is from heaven. As this earthly man was, so are we on earth. And as the heavenly man is, so are we in heaven. And we, who have been modelled on the earthly man, will be modelled on the heavenly man. This is the word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I say this to you who are listening. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who treat you badly. To the man who slaps you on one cheek, present the other cheek too. To the man who takes your cloak from you, do not refuse your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and do not ask for your property back from the man who robs you. Treat others as you would like them to treat you. If you love those who love you, what thanks can you expect? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what thanks can you expect? For even sinners do that much. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what thanks can you expect? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. Instead, love your enemies and do good and lend without any hope of return. You will have a great reward and you'll be sons of the Most High for He Himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be compassionate as your Father is compassionate. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned yourselves. Grant pardon and you will be pardoned. Give and there will be gifts for you. A full measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. Because the amount you measure out is the amount you will be given back. The Gospel of the Lord. wanted to adopt an even stricter rule of life 
than had been set down by Francis, while another group sought for a relaxation of their rules. It fell to Bonaventure to negotiate this crisis of identity and life. He succeeded in bringing the two factions together by undertaking a creative return to the original Franciscan ideals. For this reason, Bonaventure is now known as the second founder of the Franciscan order. When the Knights of the Southern Cross of Victoria was formed in 1922, in an amalgamation with the Knights of Francis Xavier, strong in its DNA was, as your own website puts it, the discrimination, prejudice and sectarianism confronting Catholics in Australia in the early years of the 20th century. As we all know, this bigotry against Catholic Australians adversely affected the lives and livelihoods of ordinary Catholic families seeking their way in the young Commonwealth, still recovering from the devastation of a world war. What is vitally important about its foundation, however, is what it did not become. An organized rebellion of young angry men. Quite the opposite. The Knights formed into an organization that might take as its motto the words of today's gospel. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who treat you badly. Give to everyone who asks you, treat others as you would like them to treat you. Through the work of the Knights, along with the good actions of many other Christians among our ecumenical brothers and sisters, sectarianism is all but dead in Australian society today. The fruits of the seeds planted and nurtured over these past 100 years should not be lost on today's generation. We might look with some concern at the rising tide of the new animosities towards those who hold to and live by a particular religious creed. But we also need to be deeply thankful that we no longer live at a time when people were unable to work or feed their family because of what they believed. In this centenary year of the Knights of the Southern Cross of Victoria, might the commands of Jesus from today's Gospel and the reforming spirit of St. Bonaventure find a way into your vision for the future? What might a creative return to your original charism look like as you plant seeds for future generations. The specifics of the old battles might be past, but reason for continuing are still there to be taken up. Love, do good, bless, pray, and nurture the families of today and tomorrow. Happy Centenary. God.
truly rise in just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a, whole, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop, his assistant bishops, me your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for
we draw upon the fullness of your grace, we pray, O Lord, that your faithful and answer the Son of us, who by your will have engaged in the things of the world, may be strengthened by the power of the Eucharistic banquet to be tireless witnesses to the truth of the gospel, and may ever make your church present and active amid the, fair, the affairs of this age, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I'd like to be seated as our state president of the Mutual Gospel. Thank you, Paul. 